God is what? Spirit. Holy. Thank you. Spirit. God is Holy Spirit. What else? God is love. God is what? Limitless. Eternal. So we've been talking about how God is. I think it's important as a church that we understand our roots, our basis of what we believe in. Because if you don't know what you believe in, then how are you going to be able to express it or share it? So we got to understand why we believe what we believe in. And today, I want to talk about that God is Father. I titled my teaching, Who's Your Daddy? Turn to your neighbor and say, Who's Your Daddy? <laughs> say it like you mean it. Ask him, like, Who's Your Daddy? <laughs> And if you're from the South, you, know, you could say it with the slang. Or if you say it here, like, who's your daddy? You know, who's your daddy? Let me ask you, who's your daddy? Do you know your daddy? And the reason uh, I want to just share this is because this message is really kind of just birthed from my heart. And when I bring up the word daddy or father or papa or el padre, I bet all kinds of emotions come up, don't they? I bet memories from childhood come up. And you might think, oh, pastor, pastor, please do not bring up this topic. I don't feel comfortable talking about my dad. In fact, I don't even like saying the word father. I bet because you've had a negative experience with your dad. Perhaps like words like abuse, abandonment, fear pop to your mind. Right? Or every time you're around your dad, you just cringe inside. You have this anxious, overwhelming feeling that it's in your gut. It's a pain that is so deep down that nobody knows about except you. You try to make the pain go away, but you can't. Or on the flip side, perhaps you've been fortunate and blessed and you've had a positive experience with your dad. Words like, Love, good, encouraging come to your mind. 
You had a dad who modeled love. So whatever dad you've had, here's the truth, and this is, the, uh, this is the, the, what I want you to hear. We all have one earthly dad. Otherwise, you literally wouldn't be here, right? Okay, how does that work? Man, woman, come together, have babies, right? We all know how that works. You wouldn't be here, literally, as a human being. <laughs> Hopefully I got your attention. I just said, I just talked about sex right there, and you guys are like, yeah, man and woman, you are here because your father and mother, that's right, thank you, Pastor Dave. See, we only get one dad for the good, the bad, and the ugly, amen? You only get one dad. And oftentimes what we can do, especially when, when our, we walk with the Lord, is that what we can do is project what God is like through the lens of how our earthly father treated and behaved towards us. And consequently, it doesn't matter how good your dad was or wasn't, let me tell you something, he still falls short of God's unconditional love towards us because he's a human being. How many know that you are a human being? That means you are imperfect in a lot of ways, but God, Heavenly Father, is perfect in all of his ways. And that's what really the goal of this teaching is this morning, just to kind of just summarize all of this, is that we have a heavenly father that surpasses what any earthly father can ever give. Do you know that? What your dad did not give, oh, God restores it and redeems it. What your dad did give, God gives it even better for the best because he's always looking out for you. Do you know that? And I, I really want to encourage us this morning. So this leads us to our first point. In your notes, you can fill it in. Let's talk about the nature of our Father God. Can we do that? Let's talk about this. Up here on the screen, I want to just kind of give you a list. Now, this list of our nature of who Father God is, is really our attempt as human beings to define who God is. And how many know it's, you know, we, can, we have a brain and we try to understand the concepts of God and they're so beyond us, but we've taken phrases and words throughout the scriptures and we've kind of put them in a list like this. Fire it up the next list. Fire it up, the, there you go. Supreme, unique, eternal, all of these words, love, grace is just. Today, for the sake of time, I want us to focus on um, giving. God as a giver. Father God as a giving. He's giving in nature. If you want a thorough list of all the, the names of God and scriptures, I have those. I would love to give those to you. But today, I just want to talk about generosity, how God is always giving towards us. Because he's a good, good dad. He wants to give us the best. How many know that love is really about giving? It's not taking, it's about giving. Jesus said it so well, right? It is more blessed to give than to what? Than to receive. So sure, receiving is a lot of fun and it brings joy and there's, but great love, according to the Bible, is defined by giving. Giving away your life, giving others your time, giving others everything you have. Especially on Christmas, right? You give gifts and you see others happy that's so fulfilling, correct? It's so fulfilling to watch your kids come alive. Uh, my son Gabriel right there in the hat right there, I'll never forget, um, I got him Skylanders. You, get, you remember those, Gabriel? He was so pumped up. I was uh, so excited that I can't wait to give this gift to him. He opens it up and he goes bonkers. Like, how old were you? Like maybe nine or eight? Like you're just going bonkers. Ah! As the giver, I felt so good about that. I felt so fulfilled that my, my son it was enjoying what I gave him. And this is what exactly is happening in the Christmas narrative. Father God gave away his very best gift. I want us to look, look at Luke chapter one, okay? Luke chapter one, verse 30. We're gonna pick up the story of when Mary finds out that she's going to be pregnant, okay? How many ladies remember when you found out you were pregnant? Okay, what's that like, by the way? I don't know, I, I've, I never, I know what Heather felt like, but what's it like to you to feel that way when you find out you're pregnant? Yeah, you're excited, anxiety, like, oh no, like, all kinds of different feelings depending on what, you know, anyways. 
Mary finds out she's pregnant, verse 30, okay? Let's check it out. It says, but when the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. Verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked, since I am a virgin? Verse 35, the angel answered the Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. Spirit. Will come upon you and the power from the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. What is going on here when you read the Christmas story? First, I would like to address, I admire Mary. I admire her, her just heart of obedience and just her submissive nature towards God. And every time I read this story, I, I'm sure she had no idea the implications of what it meant to bear or to, to have, give birth to the Son of God. She had no idea probably what was going to take place, but all she knew is that the Holy Spirit came upon her and empowered her. And secondly, I want us to, to, to see something here. In this supernatural event, I want us to see something that how God moved in all of his being, right? All of the Trinity was at work in this supernatural event in Mary's life. I have this whiteboard for us here. And I created a pie chart. How many have ever seen this illustration before? Of Father God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, what I, want us to, what I want to do is do my best to explain what is happening on Christmas morning. Can we do that? Because have you ever wondered what in the world, this is like crazy stuff. Mary is, is pregnant by who? Well, God. The Holy Spirit came upon her. So we have Father God, okay, here. Big Papa. And we have Jesus and that son, that's it, Father. And then we have Holy Spirit. Okay. How this plays out in Luke chapter one, I want us to see, I want us to see this. The Bible says that God says, the angel tells Mary, Mary, God has found favor with you. You are, are chosen by God. The Father, here now sees you, Mary, here, and Mary, you are being impregnated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we all know how male and females come together, right? We all discussed that earlier, how that works. But check this out. Have you ever thought about this? God, miraculously, Mary conceives Jesus. So Mary has Jesus here and is born without having sex with any other human being. And if you read this story late, uh, late, uh, later in Luke, you'll notice that Joseph is like, what is going on? Can you imagine if you're the husband, like, you're prego, what? How did that happen? You would be kind of upset, right? Well, he was, that's why the angel had to visit him too. But the Father, Father God came down and he, and he, and he came as a baby. So we have God, this powerful being, spiritual being, coming down and being with a virgin named Mary, okay? Now here's the interesting part that I love about the story is that we see the role of the Holy Spirit, don't we? What does the Bible say? That the Holy Spirit came upon her, overshadowed her. So we see all of the Trinity at work. We see God the Father having favor on Mary, Jesus, they will, you will have a baby, and his name will be Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you to conceive. Now, why do I bring all this up? Because this is important because we believe in the Trinity, right? We believe, you, we, we either believe this or we don't. We either believe that God supernaturally impregnated Mary or we don't. If you don't believe that, then you don't believe the entire Bible. See, you just can't believe some of the Bible and not other parts of the Bible. You gotta believe all of the Bible. 
This represents three in one. We believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three in one. All the same, but unique in how they function. And here's the beautiful part about this. All of these functions are mutually submitted. Other people might have other different theologies out there, but we believe that all of these are submitted to one common goal. They all share the same responsibility. This is important to grasp because I think as we understand how love came down, the Father came down, he came, again, here's a quick summary, he came as a human being. He came and he walked and he ate and he talked and he laughed and he cried with us. He was Emmanuel, God with us. I loved what Pastor Dave said last week, that God revealed himself or showed himself what he was like through Jesus. And he came for that that particular reason. And his whole life, he was on mission. The reason why God came, and we're going to get to this, he was on mission to be born because it led him to the cross. It's the cross where everything was finalized. It was the cross that he bared the sins of the world. And it's the the Bible says that he was buried in a tomb and on the third day that he was raised from the dead. This This is the fulfillment of what Jesus has done for us. And the heart of the Father, the heart of the Father was to give. Do you see that? The heart of the Father was to come down like one of us and give his life. But not only that, but he promises to give the Holy Spirit to be with us and in us to come upon us for power so that now we can display what the Father's Father is like. Jesus showed us what the Father is like. The Holy Spirit is in us to show us what the Father is like. Do you see that? So he promises all these things. And, and, I, and I look at this, and I look at the Christmas story, and I think, why did God take all the time to do this? Why did he put in the extra effort to come as a baby? He could have came as something else, right? I mean, he could have showed up, bam, right there, 33 years old, right here, and dying on the cross. No, no, what he wanted to do, he wanted to show us his heart on earth. His heart was displayed through Jesus. He wanted to show us that he, he wanted to come close. He wanted, us, he wanted him to come near to us. That was his heart. And I'll tell you why he came. I'm going to tell you why. He had us in mind. He had you in mind. He had everything about you your whole life. The Bible says he knows your name. He, he knew that you would be sitting in these chairs right now, church family, attending Hope Chapel, listening to this message of Christmas and how the Father, the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit are all three in one. He knew that you were, you were here at this time. And like any good father, he delighted in giving his very best 2,000 years ago in Jesus Christ as his only best gift he had. His only son, the Bible said, right? So God gave us John 3, 16. How many know that verse? For God so loved the world that he gave. So giving is in God's nature. And giving is a part of who he is in the Trinity, okay? Now, I have a gift for you. Okay, you can take out your candy now. All right, let's do this. I'm so, I've been waiting for this all morning, you guys. Now, some of you got dark chocolate, some of you got salted caramel, some of you got milk chocolate. Um, If you like the other person, say, hey, give me yours, I'll trade you, okay? Um, I want us to do this. I just want us to take a moment and eat this candy together. Can we do that? And we'll do it together, and you don't have to, I'll do it with you, okay? Let's go ahead and open it here. I gave you this gift because this is the greatest expression of love, giving candy to one another. Actually, the greatest gift of expression towards love, if you can give me, are those beef sticks, you know, those. Bacon, Bacon, yes. (laughs) Okay, I want us to take out our piece of candy. Did you already put it in your mouth? Shoot. Okay, ready? Let's put it in, let's enjoy this piece of candy. You can eat the whole thing. It's Christmas. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, karma. Do you want some Mmm, it's so good. I want to share it with you. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Are you reveling in this? Are you like, are you just like not excited about candy at all? 
This is Gordelli's, you guys. I didn't get like, you know, the cheap M&M's. I got the good stuff, Gordelli. Mm, mm, mm. Why did I give you this candy? What, who said that? Uh, yes, Harmony, because I love you. Absolutely. I, wanted to, I love you. I wanted to give you this piece of well, But what else? Why, what else do you feel right now? Yeah. <gasps> yes, I want you to enjoy the candy. And I also want you to enjoy it with me. Did you catch that? I wanted us to enjoy the candy together, to share it amongst each other. Because how many know eating candy is good and all by yourself, but it's like, eh. But when you eat it with someone else and they go, and fireworks happen in their head. Okay, ladies, I'm speaking to you right now, right? When you need chocolate, we get you chocolate, okay? Um, Yeah. Feelings come up. You enjoy it because we're sharing it with one another. I want us to hear this. The same with God. Our Heavenly Father gave his very best in his son, Jesus. In other words, technically, if you want to think about this, God gave himself to us, correct? He gave his very best so that, what can we do, Loretta? Enjoy him. And he wanted to, to give this so that we can have fellowship with him forever and ever and ever. He wants us to enjoy each other's presence. God loves it and he delights when we're together and with him to enjoy. It, which leads me to the next point. I, I want us to, to check this out. The necessity for Father God. You can fill that in your blanks. The necessity for Father God. Because you might be thinking, Pastor, this is great and all. Jesus came as a little baby. He's in a little manger. The shepherds came. Some magi came and gave him some gifts. This is a feel-good story at Christmas. A little baby born in a manger. This is God's plan fulfilled. But you might be thinking, well, why? Really, why did God do this? Couldn't have God chosen another way besides coming as a baby? Why, why did he do this to fulfill his plan? Okay, I'll tell you why. A hinge pins verse. I still got karma on my fingers. Do you guys do it? Mm, man, why don't we just have candy and just eat candy with each other for the whole service? Can we do it? Okay. Heather's like, I don't know about that. Okay. All right. A hinge pins verse. Did I say hinge pinch? Hinge pin, you know, in your door that hangs, okay? Yes. <laughs> I tell you, that candy hits your brain and you don't know where you go, okay? I'll tell you why. In the Christmas narrative, there's a verse, it's, it, it hangs on this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. I got it up here in the screen. Let's say it together, ready? Go. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Wonderful news, right? Why do we need Jesus? The simple answer is this, we needed to be rescued. From the fall of man, uh, from in the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter three, we were doomed, damned, and heading for death and destruction, death. Because of sin. We had no hope, but Father God, rich in mercy, sent his son, powered by the Holy Spirit, and he lavished, this, he lavished his love on Jesus so that we can be washed clean of our sins, so that we may be forgiven and may be saved from our sins. You might be thinking, why do I need to be saved from my sins? Because how many know that nobody is perfect? You all make mistakes, and we all fall short of the glory of God. Even if you've told a white lie or if you committed adultery, you know what that is? That's sin. We need a savior. There's a part in a, of us that need to be rescued. And God came to, to remove all of our sin through his son, Jesus, his sacrifice. That means there's no more shame, praise God. There's no more guilt. Have you ever had someone put the guilt trip on you? How does that make you feel? No bueno. It doesn't make you feel good. 
Uh, there's no more death. Praise God. We have victory in life in Jesus Christ. And check this out. There's not even a hint of fear. Yay. No more fear. Uh, Romans 8.15. I want you to check out this verse up here on the screen. Fire it up here. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to bring you back again into fear, meaning you ain't going back. You are free. The Bible says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So you ain't going back. Fear and your past do not have a grip on you anymore. Instead, what does Paul say? Look at it. On the contrary, you have received who? The third person of the Trinity. You have received the Holy Spirit and who makes us sons and daughters by whose power we cry out, Abba. Say Abba. Abba. Or Papa. Papa. Yeah, Big Papa. Abba is Big Papa. And it says, that is, that means dear Father. Do you see the intimacy there? Do you see the connection? Do you see the, 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 the desire to be close? This is wonderful news, church family. Not only are we rescued, check this out, we now belong. He saved us, but now we belong. Um, it's okay now, according to the Bible, to say, God, I need you, and it's okay that I can call you Papa, Abba, Father. It's okay that I call you that because that is who you are. Because church family, here's the good news. Not only does he, like I said, rescues, we belong. We are, not, we are a part of a new family and we have a new dad. How many are thankful that you have a new dad? I sure am. Because I know what it's like not to have a dad. I know what it's like and to have a father like this who will never let you down. Oh, it's amazing. It brings so much liberty and change in your life. Man, I'm still tasting this um, caramel. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, as preachers, sometimes you get so sidetracked, you know, you, you, you're so involved in your illustrations, you can't just get out of them, okay? Mm. Yeah. We're part of a new family with a new dad. I want you to look at this verse, John 1, 12, up here on the screen. But to all who did receive him, to all those who what? believed in his name. He gave them the right to become children of God. That's adoption. Children born not of blood, so not of your parents' descent, not of any uh, desire or will of man, but of who? God. Quick quiz. How do we become part of God's family? Be born again? What's the word? Believe. Okay? We just said this. Who are we born of? God. We're born of the Spirit. So we're born in the flesh through our mother, but now we are born of the spirit because you are made of, right, body, soul, and spirit. You have to be born of God in the spirit in order to become his kid because he's a spiritual God, correct? Okay, I know this stuff is, some, some of us, when we start to think about this, it go, our brains go, wiggity whack, right? You're like, Pastor, what are you saying? I have to be born of God and the Spirit. Like, yeah, there, there is a, a second birth, right? And that's the best birthday of them all, and that's when you give your life to Jesus. But you are born naturally. But you're also born of the Spirit. But when it says this, he, he, gave, he gave us the right to become children of God, it, it means this, that God's adoption program is available to every single person who believes. I want you to see this. Um, it's interesting that adoption in Jesus' day had a, a really powerful role uh, with people. In, Roman, in the Roman Empire, up here on the screen, adopting a child meant this, that a child was freely chosen by the parents, desired by the parents. Desired by the parents, the child was. Okay, the child would be permanent a part of the family, and parents couldn't disown a child after they adopted him. And here are the benefits. Check it out up here on the screen. Fired up, next slide. Any adopted child received a new identity. Any prior commitments or responsibilities, and I like this part, or debts were erased. 
Uh, the new rights and responsibilities we're taking on. Next slide. Also, the concept of inheritance was a part of life. It's not something that began after death. As a result, being adopted made someone an heir to the father, joint heirs in all of his possessions, and fully united to him. That was the concept of adoption in the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. I want you to see something. Think about what this means for us as a part of the family of God. As a child of God in which you are, think about what it means. When we think about this verse in Romans 8, 15, where we cry out, Abba, Father. It's our adoption, right? It's part of our adoption with God. He, he, He becomes our Father now. But I want you to think about this. It serves as a constant reminder that we are fully desired. We are fully loved. That we have taken on a new identity only because of what the Father has done through his son Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. For this reason, church family, we can cry out in Romans 8, 15, Abba, Abba, Father. He's our dad from the core of our being. If you never had a dad and you never had that affection just touch your heart, I'm here to tell you, you can experience the affection from the Father God as you cry out to him as Abba, Abba, Father. And trust me, once you discover how good this vertical relationship is with Father God, and your heavenly, heavenly Father, let me tell you, your life will never be the same. How many know that? Your life will always be changed because you have a new identity. You have new rights. You have a new inheritance. You have a new belonging. You have a new start. You have a new grace. You have a new favor on your life, right? Amen. It's because all of what Father has done, he has given away his gift. It's nothing that you have ever worked for or ever proved to anyone or yourself. He has given it freely. You are accepted. And no longer does sin have a strong hold on you. You are free. And and, and never again does your past mistakes define you. The Bible says you are forgiven. I want want you to do this as a church family. I want you to, on the count of three, I want you to take a deep breath. And then I'll say, I'll say, let it out. Okay, ready? One, two, three. (sighs) Take let it out. Take a deep breath. You're a child of the most high God. You are a daughter of the king of kings. You are a son of God Almighty himself. Take a deep breath and let that soak in this Christmas. Because God, all because of, all because of what he has done through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he gave his precious gift on Christmas morning. That's the reason why we celebrate. That's the reason why we, we need him. Amen? I want to close with this. We're going to close with this exercise. And if I can have the worship team come on up. I got some more candy. You're not happy. Okay, I'm just joking. You don't have no more candy. (laughs) I have this exercise. I want us to practice. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Dave. I want us to practice. um, Ooh, that's so cool. That's so nice. And do you guys hear that? It's like angelical beings right now. I want us to practice something. I want us to practice receiving Father God's love. Practice receiving his love this Christmas. Hear me out. For some of us, this may be really difficult to receive God's love. Because maybe you didn't have a good example as an earthly dad, so in turn, you cannot fathom God love for you. You can't even imagine that he actually really cares for you. Because the only thing you see is your dad, your earthly dad. And so you think, oh, how can God be like that? It's hard to receive the love of the Father because of that. 
Well, I'm here today to tell us, church, I get it. Trust me, I understand to the core of my being. I know what that's like. But listen closely. In God's family, no one is an orphan. Let me say that again. Nobody is an orphan. The Bible says God is a father to the fatherless. And maybe you have struggled in your life with this orphan spirit that says nobody wants you, you're not accepted, you don't belong. And then what happens inside of us if you struggle with that? It's so easy to take on entitlement, saying I'm going to fight for what I deserve. I'm going to claim for what is mine. I don't care what anybody else thinks because I can't trust anybody. I'm going to get what is mine. Grab, 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 grab. And you hold on tightly because you never received it. You never got it. How many know you can't receive if you're always grabbing and taking? Can I receive like this? No. This morning, Father God, Papa, wants you to open your arms to him. He wants you to... to do, do all your best to just let it go. It's like, Father, I receive your love. Help me. Maybe you don't know how. You don't know what that's like. This is exercise this morning as we sing this worship chorus. Just, just do your best. Because he knows your heart and he sees effort. He sees the intention of your heart before you even do it. So just open up. Say, God, I, I want you. I want you to come and fill me. So download his love. And what we said earlier, we worship him. When we download and upload all at the same time, guess what happens? We begin, we begin to change inside. Our hearts become filled with joy in the Holy Spirit and acceptance. And you could just feel the love of God. God's heart for you this morning is that he wants to give you a big hug and tell you how much he loves you. He wants you to taste and see how good he is, amen? So if we can do this for the next couple minutes, we're gonna sing this song right where you're at. We're gonna sing Good, Good Father. And you respond however you want to the Lord. Let's go into this. Thank you, Papa God. Thank you, Abba, El Padre, Pops. However you wanna call your daddy. He loves you. You know, we had a fun little song that he's the big papa and you throw your hands in the air, but how many know as parents when you see your kids throw your hands in the air, you just don't leave them on the ground. You pick them up. So as an act of worship, if however you want to extend your hands, just say, Papa, I'm here. I, I want to fully surrender. I want to fully surrender my life. So, Father, I thank you for your ministry of your Holy Spirit this morning. The ministry of your Son, Jesus, Lord, thank you for that you are all here three in one, Father, God, Son, Holy Spirit. And, Lord, we we lift up our hands because we need you and we call out to you in Jesus' name. And before we're dismissed, what I want to do, I felt led to do this. How many of you... I know it's not Father's Day, but our fathers, raise your hand. All right, keep them up, seriously. I want to pray for an impartation of the Father's heart this Christmas on you. That you can show the Father's heart to your children. So they don't have to grow up with knowing that the dad doesn't love them. Can we do that? So with your hand raised, everyone see, look around this room. If you don't have a dad here, or if you're standing close to somebody, lay your hands on that person with their hand up. They're a father. They are, they're important to your home. So wherever they're at, just lay your hands on them. If, make sure everybody's covered. Because I want to pray for all the dads, a special anointing this Father's Day. So Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, as a church family. We lay hands on our dads. Thank you for each father represented here, Lord. Thank you for their leadership. Thank you for their their courage. Thank you for their heart to provide. 
And Lord, we lay hands on them now as a family, as children, as mothers. Lord, we lay hands on them and we ask, Lord, for a blessing, an impartation of you, Heavenly Father, to come upon them so that they can show what a Heavenly Father is like. Lord, I pray, Lord, over all the mistakes, over all the imperfections, and let your grace overshadow that, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for a love to fall upon your fathers, your dads, this Christmas, Lord, bless them, use them, yeah. and Lord, we thank you for them. In Jesus' yeah. mighty name, amen? Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hey, love you guys. God bless you. See you Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. God bless you.